when you first start flying you should try to uh, not follow the rings I would actually not recommend following the rings what you should try to do is to try to get a feel for the uh, the helicopter how it is handling and how low you can fly and I would actually encourage you to crash not intentionally but I would encourage you to do so aggressive maneuvers that you crash because each crash will teach you something about the helicopter and it's better that you crash here in control environment than in an online server so be a little bit bold and do gutsy things now the maneuver I'm gonna do here is a quick turn and how I do this is from low I'm trying to keep as low altitude as possible also in the turn I will apply left rudder and tilt the airframe very roll the airframe very aggressively then I will work the mouse pulling upwards and then lean the nose down towards the ground and into a new direction this is a great way to lead off airspeed and uh, it is an essential maneuver to know we're gonna do that again I'll do it to the left at this time as well apply the rudder aggressive tilt and work the mouse upwards and there you go now if you want to remain at high speed when you do this try to keep your nose below the horizon for some reason this game interprets your gaining or slowing speed mainly from where your nose is tilting so for example if I do the same maneuver now but I tilt my helicopter upwards I will get more altitude but I will also slow down this height is too high everyone can see me everyone can shoot me so let's do a final turn like this but this time from the right now when you are training be very generous with the, uh, using the rudders and turning around this will greatly help you to learn how the helicopter feels now as I said crash a lot one interesting thing is also that I can at this altitude touch down my wheels at times this is not a fatal error uh, but the airframe will actually be damaged right let's try something more interesting now when you start trying to land do not try to land at these landing pads it will be a traumatic experience and might be a frustrating one so what you should do is try here on the asteroid you try to keep a low altitude and then when you decide to land you do a, an aggressive turn and when you come out of the turn to the other direction you lower your collective to 30% and then you start leaning backwards a little bit to try to bleed off the airspeed and then go down on the way now if you have your collective set lower than 30% it will be a quite bumpy experience so for example now I will lose my airspeed okay now we're going backwards and ooh, I'm hitting too hard All right and now I have it at zero we'll go up to 20% ish and we're falling 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 and look at the airframe you see that's damage if you want to avoid damage to the airframe please keep a collective above 30 but below 45 45 is the midpoint where you will hover this goes for both helicopters to Russia and the American one so once you have tried to uh, maneuver the helicopter into a flat space landing and you are comfortable with maneuvering it on low altitude among the dunes then 
you should attempt to land on these helipads. Now the first times you will be tempted to try to do this fast. That is not good for your learning experience. Try to do it exceedingly slow. And also try to use the C button, which I haven't done here in this game. Never mind. I don't know which is the default one. Not that one. Nope, that one. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. I do not know which button it is. In the public testing one, it is C for the downward landing camera. But I have to bind it here somehow. So let's go over to this location and see if we can land. I'm coming in low, like I like to do. And when I'm on approach, I lower the collector to around 50. I try to keep the speed up until about 200 meters out. Then I brake, and when I brake at 25, I lower the nose down again, and suddenly I am in a hover, gaining a little bit altitude. From here, then, you lower your nose never more than 10% on the altimeter, that one in the middle, and you nudge towards the edge of the helipad. And uh, this is really nudging. A comfortable speed is 5 knots. That is a real comfortable speed. Now we're going to add to 30, 35, and it's a rough touchdown at 35% collective, but there is no airframe damage. So remember that number. 5 knots forward motion and 35% collective will do. One of the things that are exceedingly annoying is that you can easily turn into a wobble when you're trying to land. This is done by overcompensating. All the actions you do in the helicopter is somewhat delayed. For example, I lower my collector to zero now, and I start dropping now. When I feel that I start dropping, then I can raise it up to maintain flight. Only the side wave motions are quicker than the up and down, but the up and down is delayed action. And this means that you will misinterpret your landing speed. And you will overcompensate in an attempt to not die. So for example, I'm trying here, oh, I'm fast. I'm gonna overcompensate oi, oi, oi. and now I'm wobbling back and forth because I am overcompensating and I'm waiting too long in between the difference. One way to resolve this matter if you are wobbling exceedingly much is that instead of lowering your speed by going forward you can apply a lot of rudder and turn around so you land in a spiral. Be careful however, this will damage your airframe because you will land in a very hot angle, but this will help you to bleed up to speed maybe. And also, they are still, I hope they're still working on it, but touching the ground doesn't feel like touching the ground. It feels like landing on ice. And now the collective is full down, but you see I can move this around and around and killing the rotor. Now that's what I wanted to show you. This was not planned. Anyway, so you have a lot of alarms going, you have the passenger screenings, and you say, hey, just the main rotor. Then you press double six, you get the repair station, and we'll see if we can hammer away. Okay, wrench away on this one. And then you have a small indicator up here by the cargo department that will slowly go up. You can only repair the airframe damage from critical to non-critical states. That would be roughly 20 or 30 percent of the main hit points of the aircraft. The alarm will keep beeping and no new rotor will come up until you are complete. <coughs> Gunning is seat F3, F4, nothing particular. 
you don't have a great sight, you can zoom in. You can't destroy your rotor, thankfully, otherwise that would be very interesting. Um, also... The airframe don't have doors here. And if you look on the side when I'm shooting, I hit on the other side. Projectiles travel through the airframe. That means pilot can be killed. This is also a traumatic experience for the passengers. If we will now fly to the Russian helicopter, I will demonstrate the differences between the two. So, so remember, crash a lot. So, now we are approaching the Russian helicopter. Gonna lower collective, raise the nose. I lower too much. Drop the airspeed too much. I want to have around 30. 40, 30. It's very easy to gain speed, uh, forward speed, but it's very hard to kill it. To the other side. Now we're gonna see if we can see the helicopter so we don't destroy what we're gonna try to demonstrate. And landed. helicopter can also shoot through as you see you can also shoot all the passengers however the pilot is much better protected so in the UH-60 the passengers are slightly better I intend to be the pilot, I know which one I prefer. You'll also notice that down by the supply section to the right, that this one has more supplies. It actually has 500 more than the UH-60. This one handles slightly heavier than the UH-60. I don't believe it's such a great difference. You also have slightly less visibility. But the same maneuvers apply. You can still do aggressive maneuvers. You cannot tilt the, the main rotor as much as you can in uh, the UH-60 before you start dropping. That's a slight difference that you need to be mindful of. However, flying level flight feels easier in this one just because your, your view is also level which is not in the UH-60. So now we're gonna touch the ground here. Okay, we didn't. So, slightly less. But everything else is basically the same. Um, the width, the size. But it's a fun machine to fly. I actually prefer this one to the UH-60. Um, I don't know why, I just like it. Alright, Smeal guys, this will uh, conclude our little training sessions. And remember, keep your rotor above obstacles. And happy flying!